This week I worked on adding a network proxy to our backend architecture. Today we will talk about what a network proxy is, why it's useful, and how we built ours. A proxy is a service that sits in front of another computer and forwards network messages on behalf of that computer. Similar to how a proxy voter might vote on behalf of a person, a proxy server sends and receives network traffic on behalf of another server. Proxy servers are typically categorized into two types, forward proxies, which operate on behalf of a client, and then reverse proxies, which operate on behalf of a server. Forward proxies exist to separate a particular set of clients from the rest of the internet. Services such as virtual private networks or VPNs is a good example of a forward proxy. Also, when you're at work and you can't access your favorite MMO tutorial series, that's probably a forward proxy blocking you from YouTube. Reverse proxies are the more typical type of proxy that we will see when working with backend services, such as our game server. For almost every backend server that does real work, there's a proxy, or in some case multiple tiers of proxies, in front of it that manages the network traffic. In our case, we will be constructing a reverse proxy because our goal is to improve security, availability, and latency of the MMO service that we provide to our players. For a few common examples of reverse proxies, you don't have to look very far. There's a HA proxy, Nginx, and HTTPD. If you read about any of the above proxies, then you, you may have noticed that the common case for using a proxy is for an HTTP or HTTPS service. Since our game isn't strictly built on HTTP requests and responses, we can't leverage many of the useful tools that these proxies provide. That said, if we build our own proxy, then we can add custom tools that suit our needs. As you can see in the figure above, the clients have no knowledge about the actual game server or cluster of game servers running in the background. This protects us in a few ways and also provides us the ability to offload some of our non-gameplay related code to our proxy service, thus offloading some of the work. In terms of organizational advantages, the core service that we want to provide is a video game. At its most essential level, that's just a network physics slash world simulation that multiple clients are taking part in. In order to accomplish that feat, there is a large amount of bookkeeping that must go on. Clients can connect and disconnect sporadically, and they may even log in and log out repeatedly. It would be nice to have some sort of contract with our proxy so that our proxy can handle all of that. This way our game server can worry about the thing it does best, simulating our game. So if we move all of the thread management, connection requests, timeout, authorization, and authentication work into our proxy, this will help us mentally manage who does what. We can also perform network packet compression, encryption, decryption, and maybe even caching on our proxy. The largest advantage of our proxy server though is the fact that it's easier to scale horizontally. This is because there is a very small amount of state held on the proxy server. Contrast that to our game server which holds the entire state of our game. Because of this, if we write our proxy server with horizontal scalability in mind, then we can scale to more users by simply launching more nodes in a cluster. Because clients must access our game server by connecting to our proxy, external attackers have no way to directly attack our game servers, so if a proxy were to mount a DDoS attack against us, they would have to mount it against our proxy, not our game server. Because our proxy is easily scaled, we can counter that attack by launching more proxies to distribute the load. The fact that our proxy is the only server available to the internet lets us categorize our other servers as internal. This can help us maintain a clear network separation so that we can prevent any misconfigurations in our network layout. There's a bit of a trade-off with availability. On one hand, we are adding more servers which can lead to more failure cases, causing a loss in availability. But on the other hand, separating our proxy from our game server lets us easily restart proxies. This would cause the clients to temporarily disconnect and reconnect to a different proxy, but not lose any of their game state on the main game server. I'm interested in exploring this topic more as our backend architecture develops. Obviously, adding another computer in between our client and server will cause additional latency. I'm interested in investigating how much latency will be added to every request. My hope is that this number will remain less than one millisecond even when deployed. My assumption for now is that the latency will be small enough to, out to not outweigh any of the aforementioned benefits of having a proxy. There may also be some chance to improve latency by doing some caching, but I haven't pursued this yet. So let's look at the design and implementation. Right now we handle two message types. Each client will send an input to the server, and then the server will send a world update message to the client. As shown in this figure, the architecture for this is basically the same as a client connecting directly to a server, except that there is now a proxy fielding the connection. To implement this proxy, there is a thread client to server, which passes messages from a client to a server. On the opposite side, there is another thread server to client, which passes messages from the server to the client. Notably, the number of threads is dependent on the number of clients and servers. If there are n clients, then there will be n client to server threads, and if there are m servers, then there will be m server to client threads. Let's look a little bit more in depth because nothing in life is that easy. In this figure, we have a more convoluted diagram that explains how our proxy works internally. The main takeaway from this figure is that there needs to be some way to correlate a specific user via a user ID to the connection that that user is available on. To implement this, I created a data type called a room, which uses a thread safe hash map with, a, with key as user ID and value as socket connection. In the client to server thread, there are quite a few use cases we need to care for. If a user logs in via their client, then we add their user ID and socket connection to the room struct. 
app. If a user logs out or disconnects, they remove their user ID and socket connection from the room struct. And finally, if a, if a user sends a new input update, then the proxy will prepend the appropriate user ID to the input update message and forward it to the game server. In the server to client thread, things are a little bit more straightforward. If a server sends a world update message, they will direct it at a specific user ID. The proxy will check the room to find the socket connection for that user ID, and if found, will forward that message to the client. Proxies can provide a lot of advantages in organization, scalability, security, availability, and maybe even latency. As you saw, the general architecture is not that difficult to follow. That said, what I presented here isn't a production-ready proxy by any means. This was an introduction to what a first draft proxy might look like. In the future, I'm hoping to ruggedize this a bit more and hopefully provide better insights into performance losses and gains.